it's fairly skinny and it's got a hole in it. Right, on the lead I have a piece of tiger wood. It's a really thin piece. Right, it's basically it's 12 and a half across and it's only two inches deep. And when I got this blank, as you know, sometimes when I get blanks, they already have resin in it, and this did. It has that resin in it. It looks quite nice actually. Um right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through another way of handling very thin blanks right i did one before uh on how to maximize the volume on the inside of one of these of a thin blank if you haven't seen that video i'll leave a link up there to it um right, i've also done standard platters out of them um again i'll leave a link up there if you want to see how to do that but if you want to see how to do it right standard platters have a really wide rim and a skinny bowl there right if you want to see how to do standard platters beautifully right uh you need to have a look at wayne the wood toners channel right um standard platters look really nice when the edge is colored and i don't really do coloring but wayne is brilliant at it right so as i said what i've got is <sighs> This piece of tiger, it's, as I said, it's 12 and a half by two. It's already got a hole in it. And so uh, we'll get on with this and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it. First thing I'm gonna do is round it off, uh, mortise and a foot. Now I want kind of a deep foot on this because of the shape I want to do this ball and what I'm going to try and do as well is see the way that piece of resin is a perfect circle I'm going to try and change that into more oval by the way I cut this Right so we get on with shaping this first thing I want to do is put the two less at the right height for starters I want to cut into that foot start pulling a curve what I want to do is I want to pull a curve right I've explained this before in a video right what I want to do is I want to pull a curve from there to here so that the bowl looks like it's hovering on the table rather than sitting on it and um, if you're doing very thin bowls or platters this will end up kind of a platter right um if you don't do that if you don't put a foot on it or the way it meets the foot isn't right it actually looks like it's sinking into the table rather than floating on it I'm just going to put the mask on because this is quite dusty.
I'm going to pull in there so I can get the pulls down into that foot. Lip is looking okay. Right, I want that uh, lip left there on the edge of it. Now I need to clean up that resin a bit with a carboid. It looks like there might be a void in it there, so I might have to do actually do something with this resin. Yeah, I think I have to fit, there's a slight void just there. I'm gonna have to take this off and fill that void. So I'll do that and be back in a sec. Okay, well it was filling that hole, I decided I don't like that lip on the edge. So we're gonna get, we're gonna totally get rid of it, we'll make it a lot smaller than it is. kind of like a very slight algae because as I said I don't like that original idea I had to be on the edge to be really clean. Yeah, granted I've changed that into an oval. 
Now I will clean that resin up with the cardboard. Yeah, that's clearer now. Right then, I'll sand the outside of this, finish it, and I'll be back for the arse with it. Now that's something if you're if you have an idea in your head for a for a piece and you're true and you don't like it, there's nothing to stop you changing it. I had an idea in my head for this piece to leave that edge on. I didn't like it, so I just changed it. So as I said, I'll uh, sand this and I'll be back in a sec. Right then, this week's Yorkshire grip bit is about one of the treasures of the tour day denim. I went through those in a previous video explaining what they all were and stuff. Right. And this one is about Louis Spear. Right. Now Louis Spear appeared in lots of legends. Sometimes it was under a different name but if you went to the legend it was the same spear. Right. Now, in this one, it is called the Dread Spear. And the reason for it is that, as I said in the original video where I mentioned this spear, whoever wielded it always won the battle. But by the time it got this far in history, the winner, or the holder of the spear, always won the battle. But something negative always came out of it. So if the spear was used in a battle, it was a gamble. That you either got what you wanted and whatever the negative thing was, was a lot less. And you basically came out on top. But sometimes it didn't happen. All right. Now this one is uh, from the King's Cycle of Irish, history, of Irish legend, right? And it's about two families. Now, the High King at the time was a guy called Cormac McCulloch, right? And he was a good man, but he had two sons, right? Um, who, let's just say, took after their mother. One was just plain evil, and the other was what they call a conniver. He was always um, plotting and planning and scheming to get one up on other people. Right? Now, it the other family were Clan Desi, and there were four brothers. Angus, Breck, Furred, and Echid. Right. Now, Furred had a daughter named Forach. Their enemy, Kyloch, who, who was one of Cormac's sons, kidnapped her and had his way with her. Right. So, the four brothers found out where her sister, found out where the girl was and negotiated to negotiated with Kyloch to get her back right he refused and so a battle ensued now yet again like most of the battles in Irish legend the description is huge so if you wanted to find out about it you could look up the king's cycle of Irish history if I can find the description of the battle again I'll put it below on a link and if I can't you might have to go looking and um, right so the four brothers uh, got together a small army led by Angus and they attacked the residence of the High King. Now, in spite of this small number, 
because they had the Dread Spear, they basically won the battle. And Angus managed to kill Carlock with the Dread Spear. But as he threw the spear, he accidentally hurt the eye of Cormac, who was the good king. Now, according to the laws of war, as I've said before about in the legends, right, the high king had to be in a perfect physical state. He basically had to be a perfect specimen. If you remember, um, remember what happened to the leader of the two days on them. Same thing. Right? Uh, now, now, because of this incident and injury, Cormac had to stand down and. Being next in line was the scheming son, and he had to hand the High King over to him. Uh, his son, Carpe Lightchair, and I don't know why his name is like that, but apparently it is. And the lads got the girl back, but they had cost the country dearly. So that's the next little bit of this tale of the two of Daydon. That they're, even though they had gone, their weapons were still causing problems in the country. So I'll get on with this and we'll be back when I'm putting the legs on. So we'll see you in a minute. Alright then, just putting the legs off. It turned out pretty nice. I'm glad I changed that shape. From what I was originally having in my head, I think this is nicer. It should look more floaty on the table than the one I had originally in my head with the thick bar here. And uh, the resin looks like it has two or three colours in it as well. Right there, the resin. Yeah, that turned out quite nice actually. Right, we flip this over. And we hollow it out. Shouldn't take all that long. So I'll do that. I'll be back in a sec. Right then, we face this off. And then we get the hollow. Right then, let's get the hollowing this out. I'm making sure I'm leaving enough to recut that resin with the carbide so I can get a good cut on it. Get this out of the way. piece of cardboard and yeah they can go on the cardboard or on the resin right now all I gotta do is flatten the bottom of that off and I can sand it finishes Oh 
Правильно? Yeah, we're good. Right, now I'll sand and finish that. And I'll be back in a sec. Alright, I'm just putting the wax off. Turned out quite nice. If I'd have done the resin myself, I'd have put a little less colour in the sort of the light. Shone through better. But it's still very pretty. And I, as I said, I got the change the shape in the circle to it like more overly so I'm actually quite happy with this one that is nice that is definitely nice right I'll take it off and give you a better look at it so I'll do that and be back in a sec right and there we have it nice little 12 inch serving dish and that resin I managed, to, I managed to change the shape to more oval and it I'll move it back a little bit you might be able to see this it sits up off of what it's sitting on rather than disappearing down into it uh, I'll slow the camera down a little if I can see if you can see that you should be able to see it there where it sits up off off the table so if you enjoyed that one, if you wouldn't mind clicking like on the video, I'll see you in the next one.